Hello everyone, Thursday here, and we're here at Spa for the FIA Nations Cup, and everyone's using the same car, the Dodge Viper GT3. And I'm heading up with my best qualifying lap for race 2 this evening, and it's not bad, but it's not great. But at least we're inside the top 10. Now, this race didn't really go that great for me, and we'll find out why soon enough. Here we go now, absolutely mega start from the build, lots of smoke from the rear tyres we'll be heading into the source. This is where you really end up getting a little bit argy bargy look. We're getting loads of elbows out here, no doubt we're going to pick up penalties. You're already starting to see the red flashing all over everyone's head. But what more could you ask for from the real penalty simulator? Now we managed to keep our nose clean while steaming up towards Spa's most iconic corner, Eau Rouge. And really, the whole name of the game for lap one is not trying to absolutely send it up the inside and make up as many places as possible because it's just too big of a risk for picking up you know those dreaded penalties slaps on the wrists so yeah we managed to keep it clean picked up a couple of places and it was time to just settle in and maximize our strong showing at pace it's easy to get on the pace pretty quick because one thing you don't want to do especially around spa is to let the leading pack pull away and effectively slipstream themselves away from the rest of the field. Because, let's say that happened in P7, I'd be sat there thinking, oh, my race is now just for P7, when really, you know, I want to be in the mix for a podium. Now, we were coming out behind Medi pretty quickly because Medi, it turned out, opted to go for the slower medium tyre, while most of the rest of us actually started on the more aggressive soft tyre strategy. We actually had to use all, not all three tyre compounds, you just had to use the medium and the hard, but you couldn't not use the soft. Now, this is where we made a little bit of an error, uh, trying to just tuck back in. I just had a little cheeky look at the inside coming into Blanchemont, and I thought, I better back off. So I just did a little lift here, tried to tuck on underneath just in time, but a little tap there, slight error, and boom. One second penalty for Medi, and I felt awful for it. I, it really wasn't something that I wanted to do, and it was an honest mistake. So, my apologies, Monsieur Medi. My apologies. You can see just by the way he's driving and weaving the car, he was not best pleased about that. So it's his penalty slightly later. Apologies again. But yeah, these little minor contacts is exactly why you need to err on the side of caution. But sadly, this time I got it wrong. Now, heading into the start of lap four, and we are all over the back of Ryan, and Ryan gives us a impossible to see indicator. I, I, I cannot see how anybody could possibly see an indicator. The light levels so low, it's just so hard to see. Now, Killian is right behind us at this point, so I was definitely not gonna make it easy for him to slip through. I knew if I just kept Ryan in between myself and Killian, I could maybe open up a gap and pull away from Killian, because Killian was blisteringly fast today. That said, start of lap five, he managed to get past Ryan, completely disposed of him on the previous lap, and he was now sniffing all over my rear. I gave him the impossible to see indicators, and I thought it's best to just let him through. There's no point really squabbling, because as you can see, and like I mentioned before, you don't really want to let the rest of the field pull away on their own slipstream train. So really, me and Killian had to work together. Approaching the first round of pit stop though, and Killian decided he fancied himself some dirty tyres, and I thought he's probably going to skid wide here, and lo and behold, there it is, nice and wide, so I thought, why don't I just dip up underneath, but we got into this awkward situation where it was a bit of like, who goes first, and then, then, the worst possible thing happened and I just I don't know my brain decided to just completely fart on me and heading into the pits I switched from soft tires to medium hovered over the medium button and then for some stupid reason I flipped back to the softs and put the softs on I was literally absolutely devastated at this absolutely moronic move only one thing left for it Full send. We come out of the pits, we get the impossible to see indicators from Killian and absolutely steam up the inside there. Very quickly we're all over the back of Bitcoin, who's on the medium tyres on the final lap. So his tyres are absolutely short, mine are brand new softs. And this, this is where I got a little bit irritated with him because he decided I really, you know, I'm gonna battle you all the way into Blanchemont. Like, why man? Like what is the point in costing both of us so much time? 
for nothing when we are completely different strategies. He only, he only ends up picking up a hard second penalty and then bumping Killian for, just to make things worse. It's just... Uh, I have no words, man. I have no words. Anyway, fast forward to lap 9 and we are caught up with Aura. Now, I knew that I was going to have to make a three-stop where everybody else had to make a two-stop because of my erroneous blunder. So heading up the inside of Aura, Aura does a little lift to tuck in behind me and we dive into the pits at the end of lap 10 to put on the mediums. Coming up to the end of lap 11, we're about to put on the hards and then we see a little bit of a whoopsie doodle. Medi misses his break point and absolutely span his neck. Let's have a look at that from uh, Medi's point of view. Now, I think he just completely missed his break point. He made a massive error. Nearly missed those indicators that are impossible to see. Now, I imagine Nick was absolutely furious with that. You can actually tell and arguably it cost him the win. Let's have a look at it from Nick's point of view. He's got one lap to go. Quinton's got a half second penalty. All he's got to do is tuck him behind and wait for that penalty to be served, but no. Boom town. I would have been absolutely livid with that because Quinton is now getting away and that was literally my win destroyed because I mean he just had to wait for the penalty to be served he would have just sailed past him. Quinton meanwhile is absolutely laughing he cannot believe his luck. Now Quinton would have probably uh, finished a solid P2 but you know easy 400 points by the end of it thank you very much. So all that was left is to defend against Sukia for P10 and he goes for the really late breaking around the outside of the bus stop chicane, a little bit of a door rough but we managed to hold on to P9 and bring it home. Not bad considering we had to make an extra pit stop compared to everybody else. We fast forward to the warm up of race 3 where WGP demonstrates why he's an absolute joker. <laughs> Anything goes in the warm up. Right, final race of the evening. This is our qualifying lap and we had to make it count. Let's settle in and see how we did. Cool. Extremely cool because that lap ultimately managed to keep us P3, which is really, really strong starting position. 
Right, let's see the grid lineup now. We're just going to look at the top six. We've got Stelios on P1, with my team killing him, heading up in P2. And of course, myself on P3 to complete the top three. Now, we're only separated by less than a tenth of the top three. We've got I trade Bitcoin in P4, followed by the absolute joker WDP99 in P5. And last but not least, of the top six, at PR1 Will, who will also be a huge stretch. There's only a couple of weeks ago that Will started P10 in the Nations Cup at Yamagiwa, and he ended up winning the race, so he is not to be sniffed at in terms of coming up through the field. Very shortly, grid lineup will be over, and we will begin the race. Now, this is where it really matters. We cannot win this opportunity. A little bit slow off the line, Killian gets an excellent start but Stelios has the inside, just got to get through here nice and tidy. Couple of nudging but pretty much everybody makes it through alive in one piece apart from Bitcoin with a slap on the wrist, one second penalty. And I've managed to get myself into P2, I just want to keep it clean coming into Eau Rouge, not get too gung ho, run wide and pick up a penalty, made it. It looks like we're getting a pretty good run and over time I started to think, oh my god, oh my god, are we gonna do it? We're gonna do it, we're gonna do it. There's only one thing left for it, we're gonna have to break balls deep. And we are through, we are into the lead. Unbelievable. I literally couldn't believe my luck. We just need to keep our nerve and get our head down. Betty just beginning to pull away from P5 and the rest of the field, probably starting on mediums, and this is a really good thing, this bodes well, we've just got to help each other pull away. Stelios is still absolutely glued to our backside, I can probably smell what I had for dinner yesterday, and he's going to keep doing so if he's going to make another move at this start of lap 2. And here it is, true to his word, he is not going to take anything lying down. Manages to spot my impossible to see indicators and makes a move up the inside. Killian, however, also has the same idea. And he's coming in, he's coming in, and he's probably going to do the same thing. Balls deep. And he is through. I felt it best to just let these guys through, not battle too much, because the main thing is to pull away from the rest of the field, which so far we've done a brilliant job of. So really, it's far better to be fighting for a podium position rather than fighting for pretty much anything. Fast forwarding to the end of the first stint on softs and we all dive into the pits. I actually opted for the same as Killian and I slapped on the medium tyres whereas Stelios curiously decided to take a little bit of a gamble and dive onto the hard tyres. Out we come and Killian is set up with a beautiful slipstream from WDP who started on the mediums and is running just one lap longer. Meanwhile I too am set up with a beautiful slip along the main straight. And this is also another moment which makes a lot of sense to just let me glide through because if I'm on the faster tyre, Stelios knows by tucking in behind my slip for the rest of the lap he can energise his hard tyre stint. He's only up on about one lap so he needs to maximise it. Very quickly coming towards the end we're up behind WDP who gives us a flash of the indicators that are impossible to see, lets us through. And then WDP decides to give us a good old smack up the bun for good luck, as if to say, you know, get after him, Tiger. Let's have a look. Obviously, he made a little bit of an error on his breaking point, but, you know, smack on the butt cheek, go on, get after him. And we are on our way. We have to hunt down Killian over these next five laps. We started lap seven around three and a half seconds off of Killian and we just need to get our head down and focus and nail every apex. Fast forward to the start of lap eight and we are still around about three and a half seconds off the pace. And then coming up towards the end of the lap, we just start to fall away. I noticed that we were losing time in the bus stop chicane around about a tenth or two. The rest of the lap we were pretty equal, but there was where it was coming good. 
coming up to the end of lap 10, this is where Killian decides to dive into the pits and go for two laps on the hard. Whereas I decided if I was to have any hope of getting past Killian, I was going to carry on, do one more lap on the medium and hopefully pray that Killian comes out behind some people on his stop and he gets held up. So this was one of those absolute mega send laps. So into the pits and trying to find out have we done enough, have we got our luck and no, we came out pretty much the same space apart as we went in before. We were however crucially ahead of the rest of the field so all we had to do now is bring it home. Coming up to the bus stop chicane I was absolutely saving the opportunity to bring home my best points haul ever in an FIA event. Absolutely sensational, I thoroughly enjoyed this race and here we are across the line with Stelios a solid P3. His gamble didn't quite come good, but because we all worked together, we didn't get tangled up in the melee at the back, as you can see there. Probably VLX drone sending it into the wall just for lols. What a race. I want to say massive kudos and respect to Stelios and Killian. I really enjoyed racing you guys. Big respect. Hard nose racing was brilliant. And there is confirmation of our 357 points, best points score ever over the moon with that and let's talk about the dodge viper i was quite surprised by this one i had not really known the car but i very quickly realized that it was absolutely suited down to the ground for me because it's got such a sharp front end and i really like that in an fr car now what i noticed in qualifying you were rewarded for really throwing the car into the corner if you got it right if you were brave however you did need to switch your style to a smoother input during the race to save the rear tires if you were able to switch between the two ultimately you were onto a winner in terms of qualifying and race strategy and that is ultimately what came good for me, I like smooth input, that favours my style. I tend not to throw the car into the corner, which is why my qualifying was strong, but not necessarily on the lead that some of the other guys were pulling. Right, that's all from me. Until next time, make sure you hit the subscribe button and change it so that you receive all notifications of my future videos. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did in producing this video. And I look forward to seeing you all again soon.